welcome to Bread and Roses, everyone. Hi, I'm Mariam Namazi. And I'm Fadi Borspuya. In this week's program, we're going to be speaking about the brutal murder of Jamal Khashoggi at the Saudi Embassy in Turkey. Interview this week is with Gerard uh, uh, Biard, the editor of Charlie Hebdo. We interviewed him in January at the third memorial anniversary of the Charlie Hebdo attacks. Our insane fatwa is about a global index on fatwas. Do we need it? No. And the slice of life is over 700,000 people in London opposed to Brexit, xenophobia, with placards calling for free movement for all. We like it. Stay with us. We've all been following the horrific news of the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, the journalist, in a Saudi embassy in Turkey. And I mean, when you look at, you know, the 15 goons who came, they came with saw, a saw. Uh, many of them are linked to the prince and uh, the top officials. Uh, they, um, there's audio recordings that he was tortured while he was alive. They started cutting him while he was alive. I mean, it's just so gruesome and unbelievable and savage. And to think that, you know, what is astonishing is the fact that the Saudi government, of course, does this every day in Saudi Arabia. You know, in the first four months of this year, it beheaded over, you know, tens of people. Uh, but the fact that it thought it could even get away with it in another country is what I find astonishing. And the audacity of them to actually, uh, uh, you know, make a statement that no, he, he's left the uh, embassy an hour after he came in. But, the, you know, the, the horrific part of this is that um, they had experts, organized experts, uh, f flew in, in into Turkey, um, assassinate, assassinated him, tortured him, murdered him, and they left as if sort of, this is normal thing. This shows, imagine for a second, what is going on in prisons in Saudi Arabia. It, it just Im imagine the horror that the, the, this fascist Islamist government is inflicting on people of Saudi Arabia. I mean, that's the thing. I think the cameras need to turn into atrocities committed by this uh, fascist um, state and the government on the uh, on the people yeah, of Saudi definitely. Arabia. Yeah, definitely. I mean, also, you know, the fact, for example, of Raif Badawi, who's in prison for 10 years for speaking up. Uh, for Al-Shamri, for example, who's been given the death penalty for apostasy. I mean, they still, for atheism, sorry, they still behead people and crucify people in Saudi Arabia. You know, so it's, it, what, what it does abroad, it's doing a million times more in Saudi Arabia. But I think one of the things is, of course, what it shows is that um, very often these sorts of governments use uh, assassination of political dissidents as one of the ways in order to try to silence dissent and of course we know the Iranian regime has mm. done that extensively you know uh, it's a, it uh, uh, killed uh, Kurdish political dissent dissidents in Mykonos it assassinated Ghulam Keshavars, for example, in Cyprus. It's cut to pieces also a political dissident, uh, Farah Zod, for example. It's killed uh, Shapur Bakhtiar. Hundreds have been killed over the yes. past uh, and, and, decades. And that's the Islamic regime of Iran does it. And well. sorry, the US has also hmm. carried out many political assassinations during the 60s and 70s. It is a way of just getting rid of your opponent. Absolutely, but the, Islamist, but the Islamists have turned it into an art on an industrial scale. Uh, you could see that this is uh, um, ISIS in power in Iran, in Saudi Arabia, in anywhere that they, ha they have uh, slight political power. This is what happens to people in Saudi Arabia every day. Thousands of people in Saudi Arabia in the prisons the nameless ones. I mean, who is to speak for them? And I think this is a really good opportunity to bring the focus on and attention on human rights violations in Saudi Arabia. Of course, you know, Trump especially, uh, one of the reasons they had the audacity to do it is because of U.S. support and 
even after all of this, you know, all the excuses that Trump made about it being a rogue agent. They use, usually use rogue agents in order to try to distance themselves from crimes that they've committed themselves. But it's an opportunity now uh, to focus on, uh, to bring new focus on what's happening in Saudi Arabia, I think. Even though, you know, governments are looking at profit only, uh, you know, there is a huge mass movement that needs to be putting human rights first. Yes. And this is a great opportunity. And actually, it seems to be a practice to lie openly, and if that doesn't work, lie again, a slightly different, and teach each other, and 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 you know remind each other. Actually, you haven't done it very well. It was a worst possible cover up. Let's do it a slightly differently. Uh, the issue of rogue agents is is very interesting. Uh, Islamists have turned it into an art, especially when they're in power. In Iran. Uh, um, uh, nearly tw 20 years ago, uh, there was a, ch uh, a serial murder of the opponents and political prisoners, uh, um, uh, uh, political opponents in Iran. So really, really high uh, level political opponents were murdered every day. And when everybody realized it was linked directly to the leaders of the Islamic regime uh, of Iran, they arrested one of the agents and said he's a rogue agent and they killed him uh, in prison. In, in prison. But we know very clearly it's got nothing to do with rogue agents. It is the act of the Saudi regime, it is the act of the Iranian regime. Rogue agents is an excuse, uh, but people know and that's why they've had to come up with these excuses really. It's such a great pleasure to have you on our program. I wanted to talk to you about, well, it's a very tragic day today. Also a very uh, sad day, but a very empowering day too, to see all the support for Charlie. How do you feel today, three years on? It's, um, it's all... F for three years in January, it's, uh, it's, always, uh, it's always difficult. You know, uh, for the uh, for the remembering of uh, what happened, and also for the uh, mediatic pressure. Pressure, you know, uh, it's uh, uh, every every uh, every media, every every newspaper wants to 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 uh, to make interviews, and uh, we are not always uh, ready to do to do it but uh, but we'll, we'll do it anyway because uh, it's understandable um, but uh, today it's it's uh, it's, um, it's something uh, uh, empowering uh, because uh, seeing all these all these people here uh, in this uh, in this theater uh, around, uh, not only around uh, Charlie, but around uh, these values we stand for, uh, which are uh, not uh, our values, they are universal va values. Um, I don't like uh, when we, when I, I heard people saying that laïcité à la française, you know, I don't like this word. Um, the problem is that uh, you have no word in English, for example, to say this word. And uh, it's, uh, I think it's a problem and it's, uh, it's also very uh, significant, you know, it's, it's a, the, 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 the only, the, the, um, the, the simple fact that no word exists for naming this value is a problem. Uh, maybe something uh, people uh, in, uh, in Anglo-Saxon countries should re should think about you know this word exists uh, in uh, in Spanish laicidad uh, in Italian and in French and uh, maybe I think in Turkish because uh, Turkey 
used to be uh, uh, like all country. I think one of the 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 the, the challenge is to find a word to name to name this value. What's uh, your problem with the, the term secular, for example? Secularism I is not the right word. Uh, secularism means that uh, religion uh, can find uh, 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 find their uh, their their uh, their uh, place in uh, societies. Uh, laicité is something very different. Uh, laicité is uh, says that. Uh, religion can't interfere with political matters, with state matters. Uh, secularism is something else. Um, is is the, the is what we can call uh, uh, in French uh, "vivre ensemble." Uh, to live together, yeah. um, so to live together, um, but uh, it's it's uh, it's not it's not uh, secularism. It's not an idea. It's not it's not uh, it's not a, a value. Uh, laicity is a value. Is an idea. It, it means that um, God has nothing to do with sorry <laughs> it means that god has nothing to do with uh, political and uh, terrestrial matters uh, laicity is also important because uh, she clearly uh, point uh, makes the difference uh, between faith and religion Faith is something, it's intimate. You can't have it and not have it, it's okay. Uh, laicité has no problem with, fa with faith. Religion is, is something different. Religion is uh, the way to use faith for political and social issues. Religion, religion is always political. Uh, it's it, it's it's the the use, it's the political use, it's a political and social use of faith. Uh, and laicité says, I, uh, faith is not my problem. Is your is the every citizen problem? But religion is something else. When you talk about universal values and that Charlie represents universal values, what do you mean by that? I think that uh, freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of, uh, of conscience, uh, freedom, uh, fr freedom of press, freedom of, uh, of, uh, of expression, are not uh, are not cultural. Is every human being uh, needs this 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 uh, this right? I don't know. I I, I I don't think there is one people, one person on earth who wants to live under a dictature, except the dictator, the dictator himself, <laughs> but <laughs> excepting him, no one, n nobody wants to live under uh, a dictature. Everyone wants to live in democracy. Uh, it's okay, it's, it's, it's true, democracy, it's not perfect, but uh, it's the, it's the best system. 
because it's the only system, it's, it, it's, it's the only political system uh, which knows that it, it's not perfect. So it, really, it, it, it always try to improve. And it's the, to me, it's the on, only, uh, only political system available. And uh, I think that if you, if you accept that religion uh, enters uh, political, uh, in, in political field, in the political field, uh, democracy is not possible anymore. What would you say to people that would say that it's better for everyone to get along and not to provoke or offend? Um, that in fact, you know, people who blame those who are the real victims rather than those who perpetrate the crime, what would you say to them? Well, I, I say, first of all, I say that um, when you say that you respect people thinking about them that they can't they can't understand uh, a cartoon or a joke or you do not respect them you despise them uh, when when uh, uh, a certain part of the left uh, accuse for example uh, uh, us to be, <coughs> for example, colonialist or racist, or they talk about themselves because they think that Muslims or or or, or black people or uh, the, 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 all these all these people they pretend to defend. They say that, oh, well, in in, in a way they're just uh, they're childs. You know, they're children. They're children. They know. They, they do not see them as uh, grown-up citizens. They do not want to see them as grown-up citizens. Uh, respect is uh, considering that anyone can understand what you're saying. And about uh, being uh, being sh being shocked, being provoked, uh, it's the it's the uh, the purpose of satire and uh, and caricature. Uh, the, the the purpose of satire is not to make uh, to to make people uh, to make their object happy. You know, it's something else. It's uh, in a way it's to make their object think about about himself. But uh, so um, I say no. I'm sorry. Uh, we are not racist. We are not uh, colonialist. We are not. You are. You are the one. And uh, what about, uh, you know, today, because uh, still uh, Charlie has to worry about security, it's not easy carrying on. Um, why do you still continue? Why, do you, why does it still go on? It's so much fear because, security. Because we... Uh, I can't, I can't uh, answer for myself. Uh, I can speak for everyone in Charlie Hebdo. Uh, First of all, I continue because I, I, I can do nothing else. Uh, I, I, it's, it's, uh, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't go on uh, giving up uh, my ideas, uh, my, my, uh, my convictions, and uh, accepting. Uh, that the, the the values I uh, I stand for are are in danger. Uh, I but uh, I I didn't the problem. It's not a problem, but uh, the, the the thing is I I did not face it. I I was not uh, 
uh, here uh, on the 7th of January. Uh, so my, um, my first feeling was anger. And uh, the only way to, uh, to, to plain that, that this anger is to go on. And I think that our friend uh, would have, would have uh, do the same. If, uh, if they uh, if, if they, they had survived they will they, they have uh, they have been gone I'm sorry for my English it's uh, <laughs> so um, I, I mean, why should people be trying why is it so important um, <laughs> I don't know. It's a, it's a question. Maybe you, are, you you have to ask to to our readers. Um, they find something. Uh, uh, they find something in this uh, in in this newspaper that they do not find elsewhere. Uh, maybe it's uh, it's the way we uh, we we treat uh, the news. Uh, maybe it's the it's just the the pleasure of uh, love. Um, uh, it's something that we 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 never we never uh, stop uh, laughing. We we can't. It's uh, it's the uh, DNA of uh, Charlie, uh, the laugh and and, and mockery, of course. Uh, and it's the best medicine against uh, of course yeah. of course it's the when when uh, when people say that we do not respect uh, anything we, we respect nothing uh, they're right uh, of course uh, because uh, if if we do not uh, laugh about uh, what, uh, for example, for example, um, we have been accused to uh, to mock death. To, to, for example, when when you when you have uh, uh, incidents or or uh, with with people killed and. Uh, uh, we are accused to do not respect uh, these people, these dead. But when you go to a burying, uh, people laugh. Yeah. At one moment, they, they, they have to laugh. Because it's a way to desacralize death. Because death, it's uh, something we can't, uh, we can't control. It's, it's, uh, it, uh, it's, uh, we're afraid. Uh, we fear death, so uh, laughing uh, about death, it's a, it's a, a, a way to uh, to accept, to to live with it, to accept that uh, okay, it's uh, someday, some some someday, it will be the end. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Grand Mufti Shahi Alam, he has announced that there is now a global index of fatwas and isn't that great because now uh, there's an index, it's going to be indexed according to region and he's hoping that this will help to reinvigorate fatwas as if we needed more fatwas and as if they needed reinvigoration. You see the problem is Mariam, people can't sleep anymore, people are you know desperate for index fat for because it's like a harry potter book we were all waiting uh, you know, for it. they need it because the laughter 
the joy it gives to people, it gives to our program. Come on, you got to imagine. Now we've got an index. Imagine, Marianne, if we have the whole index of you know insane fat bars, and we don't have to search and uh, update ourselves on the, on the latest. And of course, they've also offered to give free training to imams, free as if we need more imams, in order Do you know to why? promote. No, they, they humanity. Is humanity, the essence of the humanity. No, no thank, thank you. you. No. Over 700,000 people came out in full force on the streets of London from all over the UK to say bollocks to Brexit. They don't want Brexit. It's going to be bad news. It's inward looking. It's xenophobic. And, you know, it's not saying that European ruling class is any better than the British ruling class. But together, we can be stronger. And I think that's important. Yeah, and I think 700,000 people came out on the streets. There were no street fights with the police. Nobody was hurt. There was a sense of solidarity. And this was the biggest demonstration af after the anti-war demonstration in, in Britain for, for many years. And I think uh, the beauty of this was that actually uh, slogans were for solidarity. Slogans were that oh, everybody is welcome to, you know, there is a freedom of movement for everybody. Um, and you could, you could sense the people that actually people are marching in solidarity openly and making a decision. And this is important because the last two years has shown to everybody, even to those who have uh, um, voted for Brexit, is a given opportunity to people to think again that Brexit is going to be a disaster for people of Britain. Uh, isolation from Europe is not a means of uh, a better life for Britain and is going to have a major negative implication on people's lives. And it's time to actually think and decide again. And I think asking for people to make a decision with full knowledge of the implication of Brexit, it's the right thing to do. And I think on, on, on Saturday the demonstration was a beautiful moment in, uh, in, in Britain. So well done to everybody who took part in the demonstration. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to our year's anniversary. And yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discuss taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt and that's why the, you need to support us we are and the alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa of corruption and immorality so do support us here's a short video from patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week that's nothing support us patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators it's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or web comics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream, and in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.